Welcome to the Learn to Code podcast here at One Month. My name is Chris. Here in the podcast, we chat with people who taught themselves how to code. Sometimes they have landed jobs doing awesome things as developers, and other times it's more non-traditional jobs like using coding as a product manager or a data journalist, entrepreneurs, lawyers, MBAs. These are all the stories and conversations we have on this podcast. In this episode, however, this will be a shorts podcast where I'll focus in on one key question and try to answer it in less than 10 minutes. So the topic of today is how do I build my own website? This is a really common question that I've been asked many, 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 many times because for over 10 years, I was a professional web developer. I've worked on sites like the Grand Central Oyster Bar and the Four Seasons, big hotels and restaurants in New York. I've also worked on smaller sites for lawyers, businesses, friends that needed websites, as well as startups and even big companies like Toyota. So I feel like I've seen a lot of different websites and worked on a lot of different projects. Well, over that time, many people come to me and say, hey, Chris, how do I build a website? Where do I get started? And so in this short episode, I want to break it down into really two questions that you want to consider when you're trying to build a website. The first is, how easy do you want this to be? <laughs> Ease, easy. The second is, how customizable do you need this to be? They're on, basically think of them on like a, a line, a line left to right, and on one side we have easiness, and on all the way at the end we have, on the right, we have customization. You can make something really easy, and it's going to be quick, and it's going to be very not very expensive, and then you can go all the way to the right, and you can have something that's very highly customizable. You can make it exactly your own. I mean, every single feature and every single little button is exactly your own, but it's going to cost a lot more, and it's going to take a lot more time and people to get launched. So you may be asking, well, how do I know where I fit on this spectrum between really easy and really customizable? So let me give you a few examples of people that have come to me looking for websites and where I have sent them. So when people come to me and they say, I need a portfolio website, or they need a website for their band, or I don't know, their dad's a lawyer, or they, I don't know, they want a website for their dog or restaurant, these kind of like simple websites or blogs, well, there tends to be really easy, quick solutions solutions to these. And I always just say, I mean, most often it's like, just use Squarespace. Squarespace has lots of templates. You can go there for like $10 a month. You can just launch something. It's so easy. So something like that would be the easiest thing you can do. Use something like Squarespace or their competitors are Wix and Weebly. You can see what theme you like, what features they have. Go for it. If you want an easy kind of blog, wordpress.com is a great place to start. And if you want an easy like e-commerce site Shopify is really great for that Shopify or even Gumroad is used you can just sell like one thing you know it's like super easy so these are a bunch of sites I'll put all of these links in the show notes on the website where the one month.com blog is so that you can uh, so you can learn more about these okay so those are really easy solutions now let's talk about the other end of the spectrum maybe you need something a little more complicated. What would be more complicated? Well, for example, I mentioned I worked on this Toyota website. Well, Toyota needs their site pixel perfect. They have to get everything exactly, even by like legal reasons of how certain text size appears on, you know, I don't know, all this stuff, links, uh, images of the cars, everything has to be like pixel perfect. And if you really need that kind of image customization or layout customization, you're going to have to get something customized. And for that, you're going to need to hire a developer. It's gonna take a lot more time to hire someone, to manage someone, to know what coding languages to use. It gets a bit more complicated. Here at One Month, my company, One Month, um, we built our own site from scratch. Actually, we started out with one of these kind of free, easy solutions, and then when we outgrew it, we were able to kind of redo and remake the whole site, and we did it much more customizable from scratch. How did we know that we outgrew it? Well, we needed things like some really more advanced analytics on how people were using the site. And that's a customization that the easy solutions don't have. We also needed specific layouts for like a 30 day structure of how our students go through the course. We needed, I don't know, just like a lot of different things. We wanted to use Wistia for our videos. We wanted grading and chat. As soon as you have a lot of kind of customizable uh, needs, then you might outgrow those easy solutions and you might have to build it from scratch. Kind of the way I think about it actually is like, think about this. If you Let's talk about cake for a second. Let's imagine you needed a cake, right? It's like a birthday party's coming up. You need a cake. Follow me here. Follow me here. You need a cake. And what are you going to do? You have a few options, right? You could go to the Cheesecake Factory. Super easy. Show up there with your party, get a cake, eat it. 
I've actually never been there, but it has cheesecake in the name, so probably a pretty good cheesecake. You get the cheesecake. But you say, hey, you know what? I have a lot of people at this party, and I need to customize. I have one vegan friend. I have one gluten-free friend. I have one friend that doesn't like cheese or cake. What can we do with it? Well, they probably can't do that much for you because it's the easy solution, not a lot of customization going on there. Okay, so that's easy, you get that cake. Now, on the other hand, and follow me here, we have the customizable solution. If they come to your house, you can customize from scratch all the ingredients to solve this problem of getting your cake. You can get certain, like, I don't know, flour that's vegan, gluten-free, solve all your problems. You can make two cakes. You have a lot more options, but that option is a lot more expensive. This, this kind of image in my head of this cake is really the cake is the website, and that's how I think about it. You can just go to somebody, go to their place, they're gonna give you what they got, not gonna be very customizable. Or you can make it from scratch, you gotta buy all the ingredients yourself, you gotta know like the difference between coconut oil and vegetable oil, and I don't even know, right? You gotta like know a lot more. This is kind of the range of how I think about it. And I, and I mention all of this because now there's a third option that I'm gonna throw at you and it's called the hybrid. I would say it's the hybrid of between easy and customizable. And this hybrid is kind of like, I don't know, you go to the supermarket and you get like that box of cake, you know, like the Duncan Hines and, and in there there's like all the ingredients or like, you know, there's like the blue apron of cake and it just kind of shows up and you assemble it. Well, in that case, you can kind of swap out a few things. You can kind of add in chocolate chips or whatever you want. This is the hybrid. Um, it gives you some flexibility in customization, but you know, you also have the out of the box experience where it's easy. So. The hybrid is is probably where you would want your website if you go to all of these places that I mentioned, like Squarespace, and you don't see, like, you, you say, I will outgrow these really quickly, but you don't want to actually necessarily hire a whole team of developers or somebody to, like, build it from scratch. So the hybrid solution would be something like, well, one of my favorite hybrid solutions is WordPress.org. You may have mentioned me say .com before. .com is, like, the simple, simple, simple WordPress, but there's a second kind called .org. We here at OneMonthUse.org, and I'll, and I'll share you with my story there, um, because we needed customization for our blog. What did we need with our blog? Well, I wanted to use a template, and if you go to our blog, you'll see uh, the template I'm using is called Medium-ish. I wanted it to look like Medium, right? Um, but I know that when launching a blog, it's really important for site speed to be very, very quick right? Um, it's important because it shows up better in search results and because uh, I just think it's a better experience if there's not a lot of ads and crap on the page. So I wanted this medium the medium -ish theme, right? But because I knew how to code a little bit, I was able to go in and remove the gallery and all of like this image heavy stuff on the homepage. Um, I was able to add in a bunch of plugins, like a plugin I like called Short Pixel, which optimizes all the images converts them from PNG to JPEG if I need to, because that will be quicker. Um, I've done some unbounce integration, which helps uh, which helps people know when we have new courses available. Uh, and I use this redirection plugin, which stops uh, 404 error pages. When people find error pages, it helps redirect them to where they need to go. So these are some like really specific customization things that you may not have thought about, or you might not have right now at day one if you're getting started with a website. But these customization things are really helpful because uh, yeah, when you kind of outgrow those simple solutions, you have this kind of hybrid option. And in this hybrid option, you know, I would say the hybrid option is really anything in between being a full-time developer and not knowing anything. You really can customize even the most simple sites like Shopify. You can go in and even though it's an out-of-the-box solution, it's super, you know, Cheesecake Factory. Um, if you know a little bit of, of HTML or JavaScript, you can go in and customize their language. They call it liquid, but you can go in and whatever. And you can go in and you can like customize that so you can kind of do a little hybrid and make it your own. But of course to do that, you need just kind of like the basic of coding skills. All right, so to sum things up here, how do you build your own website? Well, for most of you, the out-of-the-box solution is going to be the easiest. Again, I'll put those links and all that show notes down at the blog, which is at onemonth.com. Check all that out. If you go there and you think, you know, these out-of-the-box solutions aren't enough, I need more customization, I know it, then you're looking at a customized solution, which is basically getting someone to develop it from scratch. In that case, you're probably gonna know about the different roles of who to hire, front-end versus back-end, for example. 
I'll do a future video or a future podcast, sorry, uh, on that where you can kind of understand the difference. Look forward to that on the podcast. Subscribe and you'll get that one. Uh, as well as like what's the difference between a designer and a developer. You'll need to know these so that you make good hiring decisions. And you'll probably want to know the basics of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and maybe one programming language because no matter where you are on the spectrum, even if you get the out of the box solution, you'll be able to take your out of the box solution and make it like a little more hybrid because even with Squarespace, you can go under the hood and edit some of this code as like a total beginner, which really takes it to the next level and allows you to make some changes without having to always kind of rely on a developer. All right, that's it for this episode of the Learn to Code podcast, and I will see you next week.